What's up YouTube and welcome back to Wooden Stuff. Today we're going to learn how to apply General Finishes top coat using an Earlex 5500 HVLP sprayer. General Finishes is my preferred top coat. It is a fantastic product for adding durability and a beautiful finish to your woodwork and projects. And of course the Earlex HVLP sprayer is just a great way to apply top coat evenly and efficiently. So let's dive right in and I'm going to show you how we get this done. So before you begin spraying, it's important to prepare your workspace. Make sure you do these three things. Have a well-ventilated area to work in. Lay down a drop cloth or protective covering to prevent any overspray from landing on your surrounding surfaces. And most importantly, wear protective safety equipment such as goggles and a respirator especially so that you don't inhale hazardous fumes or mist generated by the spraying. Okay, let's get the spray gun ready to go. You're going to do three things. You're going to disassemble the spray gun, separating the gun from the paint can. You're going to fill that paint can up with hot tap water. Go ahead and reassemble your gun. Now that we have the paint cup filled with hot water, we're going to go ahead and attach the HVLP hose to the paint gun. Then we're going to go ahead and switch the unit on by switching the power button to the on position. Then we're going to go ahead and start spraying all the hot water out of the gun. Now once the gun runs out of water, you'll see that the gun will start sputtering uh, mist. At that point, the gun is empty. You're going to go ahead and turn the unit off. Disconnect the HVLP hose from the gun itself. I like placing it around the handle of the uh, Earl X. Go ahead and open up the gun. You're going to want to check to see if there's any leftover water. There is. Dump it. Get as much of it out as you can. Then we'll go ahead and get ready for the next step. Now that you've got the gun ready to go, let's get the top coat uh, prepared. So what you're going to do is open up the container for your top coat. You're going to mix it well using a paint mixer that attaches to a drill. This will give you the best results. Disassemble the spray gun from the paint cup and place a strainer on top of the opening. This is important because it's going to remove any debris that could clog your spray gun. Next, you're going to slowly pour the top coat from its container into the paint cup through the strainer. And you want to fill about one inch from the rim. By the way, I find that it is unnecessary to dilute General Finish's high-performance water-based top coats. They spray perfectly straight from the can. Then go ahead and reassemble the gun, and then quickly rinse the strainer that you just finished using because if you don't do it now, it'll harden and it'll ruin your strainer. So don't forget to do that. Okay, we're almost ready to spray. We just have to do one more thing. And that is to adjust the spray coming from the gun. Now the way that you're going to do that is you're going to grab a scrap piece of cardboard. And then you're going to spray a short burst to ensure that you have the proper adjustment to the spray. Now you're going to make the adjustment by adjusting this knob to the left or to the right, clockwise or counterclockwise to add material or reduce material. You know that you have the best setting when the spray of the top coat comes out and it sticks to the cardboard without running down. The sprayed material needs to be heavy enough to cover your project but thin enough so that it doesn't run. You also want to test all three spray patterns on the gun the vertical setting, the horizontal setting, and the round setting. Once you're comfortable that you have the appropriate amount of material coming out, then you're ready to go and spray. Now with the sprayer properly adjusted, we can start spraying your top coat onto the project. So a couple things. Always spray a minimum of three coats and sanding in between the first two coats. Then you want to begin by using general finishes with a glossy sheen for your first two coats and end your last coat with the finish you ultimately want for your project. In my example, I ended my last coat with a satin sheen. 
The reason that you use the glossy sheen first is because it has more solids in the formulation which creates a more durable finish that holds up better to wear. So you spray the glossy and then you finish up with the satin. You want to hold the sprayer approximately six to eight inches away from the surface and apply the top coat using long even strokes. You're going to want to move the sprayer in a steady back and forth motion overlapping each pass slightly for consistent coverage. Take your time and maintain a consistent distance to avoid uneven application. You want to spray twice, once spraying left to right and then the second time spraying top to bottom. By doing this, you're going to ensure that you get complete coverage on your project. Be careful not to overspray upright surfaces because it can easily cause dripping. And you don't want that. You can always take it out later, but it's really difficult, very time consuming. Better to do it right the first time. Second, if you're spraying level surfaces, such as a tabletop, those can be sprayed heavy and you don't have to worry as much about uh, overspray or dripping because it's a flat surface. General finishes will self-level and will not hurt your finish in the end. As I mentioned, you want to get at least three applications of top coat. It's very important that in between each coat you sand and that's to ensure that you get a good final finish, very clean and very smooth looking, and for the adhesion of the coats on top of one another. So you're going to want to do that by using a fine grade sanding uh, pad or sandpaper. I happen to use a Sure Prep High Flex sponge, uh, sanding sponge that's 220 grit. Now, of course, before you start sanding, you have to make sure that your top coat is dry. It has to be dry to the touch. It can't be tacky. Now it's going to depend on your location, humidity, and temperature, but it typically takes between one and two hours to dry. Now to begin sanding your project, remember that you always want to sand in the direction of your grain. The reason that you want to sand in the direction of the grain is because if you don't, you're going to get really bad score marks that go opposite of the grain and it will show up uh, like a sore thumb on your final finish. So very important that you don't do that. Now as you begin to sand, white dust is going to develop. That's perfectly normal. Uh, the only task that you're trying to accomplish here is to get a smooth surface. Eliminate anything rough, get all the lumps, bumps, anything like that off of this finish. Don't sand too harshly because you'll get down to the stain and you'll ruin your project. Just very smooth, back and forth strokes, soft sanding to get a nice smooth surface in preparation for your next or your final spray. Now once you're done sanding, you're going to want to clean all of that white dust off of your project before the next spray. So you're going to go ahead and I like using a vacuum with a dust brush on the end of the hose. You're going to go ahead and vacuum up the dust in the direction of the wood grain, making sure that you get the majority of that dust up. In some cases, depending on the type of wood you're using, you'll find that some dust will remain inside the grain of the wood, and that's going to be okay. When you reapply your second or your final coat, that dust gets absorbed into the top coat material and it'll blend in and when it's finished you won't even see it it'll be perfectly fine now we're going to apply the final coat this coat is going to be the most important as it's going to be the ultimate uh, ending finish for your project so you want to make sure that you spray it the same way that we did before this time you want to be extremely careful that there's no debris flying around, dust, that kind of thing, because it'll end up on your finish and it'll show. Now this finish you want to apply a little bit thicker or heavier to ensure that you get a really good coat so you end up with a really good finish. So this is what a good final coat looks like. You can see it's pretty thick there in the light you can see it glistening that's what a good 
coat of final finish will look like, particularly on a flat surface of your project. Now, if you've done everything correctly, this is how your project will come out. Nice and smooth, great finish, and when you display it, it's going to look like you bought it at the store. Remember that practice makes perfect and that it may take you a couple projects to get it right, but I promise that you will if you follow my steps. Now your project's finished. Now don't forget about cleaning your spray gun. You're going to want to disassemble your gun, dump out any of the remaining top coat back into the original container. Then you're going to want to go ahead and fill that paint cup up with hot water like we did in the beginning. You're going to reassemble your gun. You're going to go ahead and connect it to the Earlex base. You're going to turn it on and you're going to spray out all that hot water until it comes out clear. That is the water spraying out of the gun comes out clear. Once it's clear, you're going to open up, disassemble your gun dump out the remaining water you're going to dry it and put it away for the next time well well done youtube you've learned how to apply general finishes top coat using an Earlex hvlp sprayer remember to take your time and practice because practice makes perfect if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell to stay updated with our latest content Sharing this video with your friends and fellow woodworking enthusiasts will help our channel grow and reach more people who can benefit from our tutorials. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Happy woodworking!